Hi, and welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about a light meters and a hack I just came up with to use my colorimeter as one. So, handheld light meters have never been something I've found especially necessary. Uh, shooting digital, I could almost always just check the histogram on the back of the camera, make an adjustment, and shoot again. And when I couldn't do that, I generally could rely on the camera's meter to get me close enough to uh, whatever I needed that I could fix whatever errors were in post. However, since I started doing these videos, I've started to gain a much greater appreciation for the handheld light meter. Uh, see, I shoot these videos by myself, and because of that, I can either be behind the camera, where I can see what the exposure and histogram are showing, or I can be in front of the camera, looking at a tiny picture on my camera's monitor, adjusting the lighting, and so on and so forth. But I can't be in both places. And getting the right exposure has been tricky at best. I can kind of make a guess and I can change the exposure, hope I get it dialed in, get back in front and take a look again. And even going through that iterative process over and over and over, I'm never completely sure if I've got the exposure right. And see, that's the thing with digital with video, because it's a much more limited uh, bit depth and uh, it's more heavily compressed than, say, shooting in uh, raw, 14-bit raw for stills, it's much more demanding of having the right exposure, having the exposure right from the start instead of, you know, messing around and fixing it in post. However, with a handheld meter, I can make measurements and adjust the lights here in the, the position of the, the subject and already knowing sort of what settings I'm going to be using, at least for like shutter speed and ISO, and then just simply get the lights dialed in and everything should be exposed properly when I get back behind the camera and make sure, you know, have settings dialed in there. So this brings me to the hack. Um, and I just realized this the other day when I was profiling my new monitors. So I own a, an X-Rite i1 Display 2 colorimeter. And it has an ambient light sensor measurement mode. And on top of that, I use the open source color profiling and management software Argyle CMS. Well, I actually use Display Cal and that uses Argyle CMS. But the Argyle CMS package provides a wonderful tool called Spot Read that you, you can use it to read uh, ambient light or make specific spot measurements from a, a test target or something like that. And then it kicks out a bunch of useful data depending on, you know, what it measured. So to start with, it gives me the color temp that it came up with from the light, which of course, is immediately uh, and eminently useful because while I bought lights that are uh, or a lamp that says that it's 5500 Kelvin, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is 5500 Kelvin, or for that matter, that the uh, diffusion material that it's going through, which should be neutral, but that doesn't mean that it is neutral and it could be picking up a warmth or something like that. So I can dial into my camera right away the color balance, the measured color balance, and I'm not guessing and hoping, and then there's just that much less adjustment that I have to make in post-processing. Uh, on top of that, it gives me the, the measured brightness, and it gives this to me in two values. One is lux, which is not entirely useful to me, but the other is an ISO 100 EV level. And it's this later point that is the really useful bit. Because with an ISO 100 EV value, it's or exposure value, it's possible to translate that back to a shutter speed and aperture and an ISO at the camera. I mean, you have to know some of those. You can't just do, uh, you know, figure it all out from the EV. But for example, like I shoot video and that means that for 30 frames a second video, I'm going to have a shutter speed of a 60th of a second. And I want an ISO. I, I know from experience that my ISO needs to be around 800. So 
I can then just figure out the aperture based on the EV value that the spot read tool gives me. You know, so for example, I can take my colorimeter and sort of point it at this light, my key light here, and fire off spot read with the command spot read minus A minus capital O, and it comes back and tells me that I have an approximately 4,500 Kelvin light and that it's metering 6.8 at EV at EV100, or 6.8 EV100, however you want to call that. And so I can then take that EV100 value and fiddle around with it and plug it into, uh, for example, a tool I have on my website, which I'll link in the description. Uh, and I come up with uh, a setting of a 60th of a second at F3.5 at ISO 800 which in fact is a tiny bit, it's a third stop brighter than what I've been shooting these videos at. I've been shooting them at a four. And of course, that color temperature thing was super useful because I had been previously color balancing for uh, 5,500 Kelvin because that was what the lights said they were. And now all of a sudden, I am actually should be down at like 4,600 Kelvin. So now, of course, this is a hack. This isn't meant to replace a handheld light meter. And so, for example, the colorimeter doesn't have a 180 degree light dome like an incident light meter would have. So the incident meter readings are going to be close, but they're not going to be exactly the same. And then, of course, it has to be tethered to your computer or a laptop or something running the Argyle CMS software. Uh, or there's an, actually another option, which is uh, you can buy from the people that make, or the guy that makes Argyle CMS, the Argyle Pro app for an Android tablet, which would elect, allow you to plug the uh, colorimeter into that, and then it provides basically full color measurement and meter reading capabilities on a tablet. But in short, it, it's not that I'm suggesting this is a like practical alternative of don't go out and buy a light meter, but you know, if you're like me, uh, I have a color colorimeter because it's been important for me to calibrate my displays and so on and so forth. But I haven't bothered to buy an incident light meter yet because I haven't had a need for one yet. And so this hack, if you will, allows me to kind of make these same meter readings that I need to make without or I would want to make without having to, you know, spend the two or three hundred dollars on a decent or a good incident light meter. So that's it. There's your hack. Use your colorimeter as a light meter. If you found this video useful, you know, please do me a favor and smash the like button and consider subscribing. Uh, for more detailed written content on photography, travel, and gear reviews, uh, please check out my website at pointsandfocus.com. And thanks for watching.